Grammy-winning superstar Naomi Judd is the matriarch of country music's most legendary duo, the Judds, who've had more than 20 top 10 hits. Away from the spotlight, Naomi struggled through severe depression that almost killed her. Just last year, she was supposed to join me right here to talk about her struggles, but her anxiety and panic attacks kept her locked in her own house and in her own mind. She recently invited me to sit down in her Nashville home for a raw and intimate conversation about our harrowing battle with depression, drug addiction, and secret suicide plans. She's opened up about what saved her and how she found hope and healing again. Picking up the broken pieces has always been a theme in Naomi Judd's rags to riches life story. In her recent and shocking memoir, River of Time, the country music icon reveals in graphic detail the abuse she underwent early on. At three years old, while recovering from the chicken pox, her uncle climbed into bed and attempted to molest her. That, she says, was her first memory. At 22, while daughters Winona and Ashley slept at a neighbor's home, she describes being beaten and raped by her heroin-addicted ex-boyfriend. After putting herself through nursing school, Naomi took a chance at a career in country music. It paid off, and she and her daughter Winona found fame and fortune as the Judds, selling more than 20 million records and winning six Grammys. But guilt, anger, confusion, and deep sorrow plagued Naomi Judd. Sudden and unbearable panic attacks and severe depression led to a prescription drug dependency. At one point, she even contemplated jumping from the Natchez Trace Bridge near her home. Today, Naomi says she's done hiding behind closed doors. She invited me to her home to talk candidly in the hope that it will help heal others. Thank you for having me in your house. A doctor that actually makes house calls. This is pretty cool. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So let me start with the beginning with you. Most people don't realize that you are an ICU nurse. Mm-hmm. I see you. I see you. You're trained in my profession. But you decided to become a nurse at a time when you were very fragile in your own life. Mm-hmm. Back then, I was a single working mom, absolutely desperate on welfare, even though I worked. I moved us back to a mountaintop in Kentucky. I wanted to earn a degree, but I also wanted to earn self-respect. So I put myself through nursing school. Little known fact, I was actually going to the University of Louisville to med school. I wanted to become an MD. But then Miss Wynona, Wynona, <laughs> had started singing and I knew we had to move to Nashville. This book, River of Time, it's one of the most brutally honest <laughs> memoirs I've ever read. Hmm. Most of us would not be able to write with integrity um, that you wrote through. Why'd you do it? It was very difficult, but one thing I know about myself that I figured out, when I was an entertainer, when I was on stage singing the songs that I'd written, I knew that it really wasn't about me. I'm a communicator, and whatever I do, it's our stories that connect us. So I thought, okay, the way that I make sense out of all the deep, dark depression, the horrendous and panic at attacks that I had was to be able to communicate with somebody else because I know that somebody right now is listening to this. So let's talk about what happened last year. I, I, you were scheduled to come on the show, mm -hmm. uh, and I got a note that something in the discussions you were having about the book had triggered memories. What was happening that, that sort of froze you and took you to a bad place? The book is starkly truthful that everybody in America could know all this stuff about me. And I felt shame in a way, but then I quickly got over that because I realized this book isn't about me. It's about making sense of what I went through, but this book is really about helping other people understand that they are not alone. I see you come alive so beautifully on stage, and you did a big tour, finished, I guess, in around 2015, so mm -hmm. three years ago. And then you have the equivalent of a breakdown. What my Judd Ants would say, a nervous breakdown. Remember when they used to yes. call it that? Your Judd Ants would call it a nervous breakdown. Yeah. I was trying to look for a more polite term. 
So what was happening to Naomi Judd when, with all that acclaim, all that success, a wonderful tour, all of a sudden the lights went out? I don't, nobody can possibly imagine unless they have won all the Grammys. I mean, uh, the London Palladium, Carnegie Hall, Madison Square Garden, Super Bowl halftime. How do you go from that? I remember the night my bus driver dropped me off here at the farm. It was two o'clock in the morning. It was a December night. It was frigid cold. I came in this house and I felt like my life was over. I couldn't catch a breath. So I went through laying on the couch in there for days. I wouldn't even change my PJs or brush my hair. I was in really, really bad shape. Naomi Judd invited me into her kitchen where we talked about food and family, but not what's in her refrigerator. You can't go in my refrigerator. <laughs> There's no kale in there. The kitchen is a sacred place for my family. Yeah. How was it for yours? You, you talk a lot about family events in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Well, my mom was a cook on a riverboat on the Mississippi, so cooking was everything to her. And she, of course, passed it on to me. So in, in our family, we have all kinds of, of rules to try to make sure we talk to each other. I'm mm -hmm. not as good at it as, as you are because I found this thing called the powwow rules which I would love if you could explain this to America. Notice that I laminated it so if you get food on it, you can wipe it right off. But Ashley and Wire and I are all communicators and we're very verbal and we can suck up all the oxygen in the room pretty darn quick. So number one is no interrupting. I'm not gonna say names, but one of my daughters is real bad about that. Uh, I, we can guess, but keep going. <laughs> no shouting. And then everyone gets as much time as they need to express themselves, and that'd be Ashley. She is the second child, and she'll shut down. Mm -hmm. If she feels like she's not going to be validated, everybody must be prepared with their thoughts and their solutions. Stop and think before you speak. So you talk to the person as if they were a friend instead of your relative. And then the last one is everybody needs to remember our commitment to communicating is the bottom line to making sure that we feel safe in this family. So what do you talk about at the end? I mean, these are, these are heady rules, but what do you actually talk about? Never show business. Never and, show business. Isn't that a surprise? Yes, it is. Um, basically, it's funny stuff. We do the bent over double belly laugh. We're, we're a laughing family. We feel strongly about that. But most of the time, we talk about real positive stuff. When you're having trouble, were you able to talk to them about it? No. I didn't want them to know. They think that I'm invincible. It's always just been the three of us, the comrades in the trenches, and I just didn't want them to know that their mom, that they turned to for everything, was going through something like this. You have two very bright daughters. I would have to think that they suspected there was something going down. Actually, more so than why since Ashley lives next door. Larry had to call her one night, called 911 and called Ashley. Mm -hmm. And they took me to the hospital. And she's the one that dressed me in a, a black wig, oversized sunglasses, and snuck me in. That's brilliant. She's my girl. Yeah, yeah, I call her my sweet pea. It's yeah, well termed for her. We all have food nicknames. My own is Tater Tot. <laughs> Tater Tots? Oh well, my she, goodness. She might not like it that I told, told <laughs> that. What's yours? They've never given me one. We ought to give you one. Give yourself a little moniker. What do you want to be called? It might be gravy, because I make, I'm the world's expert on making gravy. Family is probably the most powerful healing tool ever been created. What do they do that makes you realize they love you? I can just tell by the way they look at me. It's real obvious. It's a lot to love. You've been through therapy. Uh, mm -hmm. you've, you've argued that nothing quite equals it. And you have to develop tactics to get beyond it. Mm -hmm. Tactics here in your home, mm -hmm. in the places where we, all of us are living our lives. Mm -hmm. So I'd love if you could share some of these with us. One is the, the ABC. It's, uh, you're... A is accumulate. So I would um, think about all the good things in my life. Number two is B, build on mastery. I try to think about the things that I know how to do. I can communicate with people. And then C is cope, my coping mechanisms, like nutrition, 
um, just all the integrative medicine approaches. Let, let, me, let me end by asking you the best advice you can give folks who are struggling with depression. You have to appreciate that depression is a disease. It's a disease of the brain. In my book, which is about how to survive depression, yeah. I list um, actual steps that you can go through to help yourself. You have to have hope. The more I look at my own life, the way that I've gotten out of all the jams, and there's been some heavy duty jams, it's I had hope. Your future is so much bigger than your past. You're a wonderful person. I think you're giving a lot of people hope. You're showing them that the recovery is real, and you're a gleaming example of that. So God bless you for letting us into your home today. You're welcome. I have one favor. There's a refrigerator behind us. I'm going to walk no. in. No. Just taking a I'll quick peek. I'll do anything. It's just a no, short. No, there's no kale in there. <laughs> we don't do kale at this house. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you to Naomi Judd for having me over. We're going to put her Judd family powwow rules online. And check out Naomi's book, River of Time.